Ben is tackling painting at once from the vantage of the 21st century as it looks back over the 20th century and the late 19th century with all its modernism and keeps looking back into what is generally called classical art. But at the same time, he's attacking it as if he's the first painter who ever put color on a flat surface. The pig and shark paintings at first glance seem like some kind of abstract expressionism, but actually they're like cave paintings. The primitive hunters in some kind of religious or spiritual impulse painting the living creatures that made life possible for them. And these, these wonderfully ragged, rugged surfaces with these simple colors. Here, Ben is, in some of them, it's the primary colors with some black. And he's representing pigs and sharks, which of course, that's right away evocative. It's uh, pigs are the most domesticated food animals and sharks are some of the still wildest animals. So, so, so there's this interesting contrast between that which is most wild, the painter putting color on the surface for the first time ever, discovering what painting is, and the pig, which is the result of constant breeding and man's cultivation the, the modern pig is uh, practically a, a, a creation of man, just like the great progress of art history. What Ben discovers painting this cave wall with these symbols of being 21st century man and being new man at the same time, he discovers right away one of the great messages of so-called modernism, which of course is in fact a reactionary movement, a movement of painters who wanted to get back to real painting, get back to the old masters in the face of this more and more image-oriented, more and more illusionistic-oriented painting that happened in the 19th century as the result of ideology taking over. The next series of paintings is called Crash. And here, Ben is doing something that's, again, very interesting from the point of view of, of discovering painting because he's reproducing instinctively some of the exercises that Aaron Curzon was teaching from the 40s to the 70s. For instance, in the one with the great fire, there are basically three areas. There's the orange area, and then there's a much smaller blue area, and then a much smaller black area. So he's dividing the space 
in a strongly hierarchical way, which gives a lot of sense to what's going on. And in addition, the black, the small black mark is a human. The, the blue mark, it's sort of two blue marks, but it's, it seems to be two pigs and then the world is on fire. So this is the, this is, this is man in the present condition where all our traditions are just being exploded by what's happening in the world. And, and the red line in the two other crash paintings suggests the machine like a spear crashing through nature, these, these animal forms that are disposed across the canvas. The early modernists discovered, rediscovered, re-emphasized that painting, as Poussin said, is essentially lines and colors on a surface. But it's not just that. It's also pictures of everything under the sun. And in the next series of paintings, Ben is tackling the most traditional subject you can possibly paint, which is the female nude. The one of Jeannie is a particularly beautiful one because here, Ben, in addition to emerging into the discovery of the, the message at once of the cave painters and the most advanced modernist is in a In a, in a bold, but how shall I put it? In a bold, but, uh, but delicate, not hesitant, but I don't know, it's, it's a move that takes bravery. And in this move, he's, he's, he's trying to rediscover drawing because essential to drawing is, is form because Every mark implies form as much as it's a disposition of color. These nudes emerge more or less as nudes are always very powerfully graphic. I would even say that, that these paintings, yeah, I'll put it this way. This painting is infinitely more powerful than, say, Basquiat, which is just fake powerfulness. Basquiat is just um, adopting more or less worn out symbolism and throwing it around without any, without the kind of plastic consciousness that these paintings of Ben's display. In one sense, they're crude, or you could say primitive, but primitive in the kind of delicate way that cave paintings are primitive. They, they seem to be violent, but the, the violence is tempered by a kind of care. The painting isn't just thrown onto the canvas. And you can feel, for instance, in the nude, the green and yellow nude, the way the yellow is disposed is very thoughtful. Yellow and green and how the blue is used just in the hair and the head and that great vertical moving into the red and the red in the feet. So there's a lot of sensitivity and, and care going into this. At the same time as one feels the one feels the naivete of it, the sense of the first man discovering. But again, with the weight of all that, you know, the, <laughs> the, 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 the blue pigs, 
So one could imagine, for instance, that the, the, the green nude, the, 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 the blue head is, is the thought, the thought of, of the, all the past and, and the red feet are something more, more fundamental that's going on. The self-portrait is more like abstract expressionism. Again, Ben is displaying some very good instincts. There's more yellow and less black and less red and just a little bit of blue and a tiny bit of green, which gives the painting some real color coherence. And then he has his forms spreading across. And one might think that that dancing red demon is something about himself. But something about the sensitivity and intelligence with which he's dealing with the whole page is also something about him. Now, these baby with shark paintings, there again, it's interesting in that it's, it reminds me so much of, of what Aaron taught. Because, for instance, in the green, yellow, and red one, there's a lot of green, much yes, less yellow, and a little bit of red. And those colors can be changed around. And that's how painting really works. Painting is not a copy of things. It's a language on its own, where the, the colors are the words, and, and it's a poem. And painting speaks its own language and he's telling us this strange story ben likes to uh, try to be surprising and it is surprising the baby and the shark when i was a little kid i once um, found a baby shark that was was dead and i fooled with it quite a bit so this painting reminds me of myself. So it's surprising in one way to combine these things, but it's something that comes right out of my own experience. Now, I can identify easily with that baby and my experience with that shark. But it's a, it's the, the, the series is a very important lesson that maybe Ben is teaching himself about how the language of painting really works, what it really means. That it really is a language, but it, it really is about things. The Ophelia painting almost starts to get delicately pretty. It's interesting to see how Ben's fury can bend towards those kinds of delicate sentiments. I'm not surprised to see that in his painting because I know him a little bit and I know that while he does a lot of acting out, he's actually a, a very sensitive and civilized person. 